Hello everyone and welcome to episode 49 of my Human Mage playthrough. We are getting pretty close to the end of this Let's Play series as we are level 52 and are beginning to approach the end of the game, which is really really cool and there has been a lot of stuff happening in Classic WoW recently where Hardcore was introduced to the game so I've been playing that on stream and whatnot and there was a recent update to the game where they actually reset the talents and I don't entirely remember what talents we picked so I'm gonna just throw some talent points into this tree here so I'm not a hundred percent sure I could go back and look at what talents I put in but I think this is good enough it's probably pretty close to what I had if not the exact same thing but in this episode I want to start a brand new journey to a brand new zone that we have not been to yet and I'm probably going to be doing lots of things this episode just to level up our character a little bit as we begin to approach level 60 but for the most part I want to primarily focus this episode on a single zone in this game and it is the burning steps which like I said is a zone that we have not been to yet we have some quests to do here and some quests to turn in and some quests to pick up we explore the Syrian gorge which is a zone that is very similar to the burning steps but it's a little bit lower level and is on the northern end of this zone and it has a lot to do with black rock mountain where in the Syrian gorge we focus a lot on the dark iron dwarves as we go to the burning steps we are going to be focusing a lot on the black rock orcs which is a group of orcs that we fought a lot of in red ridge and we haven't really interacted with them since then but we're about to do a lot of stuff with them and there's some other things here as well that we can do but first things first is as I kind of conjure all the food that I need for this adventure as we head out here we are going to go ahead and take a griffin to Lakeshire because that is the closest fly path that we have to the burning steps and then we'll have to ride our horse north through the mountains and into the steps so let's go ahead and talk to Dungar long drink here and we can go ahead and start our journey towards Lakeshire which shouldn't take too long and now that we are in Lakeshire, we can go ahead and mount up onto our Black Stallion and let's go across the Everstow Bridge here and we can take the road north out of this town here. And we have been along this road quite a few times and as we are about to see up in front of us to our right, we are going to see some Black Rock Orcs like we see right there between the rock and that tree. And these Black Rock Orcs are very, very low level compared to what we are now. They were quite challenging when we were at their level, they are level 21, but we could probably like two shot them now. But we are going to run past all of these Black Rock Outrunners here, and we are going to continue past this camp at Render's camp right here that we did a bunch of questing in uh, like 20 episodes ago now. It's very nice to kind of run through Red Ridge and to head towards a brand new area. And I mentioned how cool it was that there is a very high level area right next to a low level area because one day we will be able to go to this new area, but it's going to be a very long time because we are still very low level compared to what we need to be to go to this area. Well, now we are at that level a long time later and we can go ahead and leave the relatively tranquil area of the brownish, maroonish, red ridge mountains, reddish I guess, and we can head in to the burning steps which we see is very dark and very black and very on fire, similar to the Syrian Gorge. So we have this gate here that is a little bit destroyed and open right now that we can run through and we can go ahead and cross this bridge where there is an obsidian elemental, a level 52 elemental right there. Just going to ignore that for now. And there are a couple of safe havens in this zone that we can go to, one of which is an alliance base and one of which is like a little bit of like a goblin base slash a horde base but it's like more of a neutral base that we are going to go ahead and go to both of those locations the first of which is right over here so this is the alliance space here and we can try to ignore this ember war level 52 i don't really want to fight anything right this second as i kind of just want to take a moment to explore this area and show it off a little bit because this is a very cool zone even if it is a little slow or small in the amount of content that is available here but we have Morgan's vigil right here and let's go ahead and get this flight master which will connect us back to Stormwind and to all the other flight paths that we have in the Eastern Kingdom and let's go ahead and pick up all the different quests we have right here where we can pick up these two things and then we have 50 uh, yep where we need to collect 50 badges from the black rock orcs around here 50 black rock medallions to be exact 
And we have some other quests around here. Some of these are dungeon quests. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick them up right now. And we can go ahead and get rid of them later. I just wanna pick up every single quest we have. And let's go ahead and head back out of this place. And we can go ahead and head towards the goblin camp here, where of course we have all of these different question markers around here that we can do. But for now, we are going to just go and pick up all the quests in the zone. We have some stuff from Ironforge to do here, and we have a quest from Gadget Zan or from Tenaris uh, that we can turn in as well, which is kind of cool. Those ogres are level 50, that Black Worm Kin is level 54, which is for this Dragon Kinemonis quest, which is an elite quest where those dragon or a Black Worm Kin were elite level enemies so by ourselves they may be a little bit of a challenge for us to deal with we could try maybe a pull or two on them to see if we can one v one them but for the most part when it comes to that quest i'm going to be looking for other people in this zone to play with because that tends to be a trend with classic quests as we have explored in the series where quite a few quests in the world require you to group up with other people and that gets changed in the wrath of the lich king where a lot of those group quests become soloable by an individual player. But let's go ahead and sneak past the ruins of Thoris in here, which is a very, very cool lore location that we'll talk about in just a moment. Actually, there's a relic right here. I guess let's go ahead and open this and see if we can get some information about this place. And we did, where a tormented voice says, He cannot be defeated. The relic burns to nothing. The memories it held are now your own. The city was destroyed by a being not of this world. Very interesting there. Let's go ahead and run past here. Here we have a cool little bridge right here that's just like a burnt plank across this ravine that has lava at the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and run across this ravine a little bit and we can get over towards this goblin camp here right next to these ancient ruins of an ancient dwarven kingdom, which we talked a lot about two episodes ago, but I'll touch on it again like i said but we have flame crest here and we see a horde banner right here with a wyvern master so this is kind of the horde outpost in this map but it's also basically a neutral outpost where at least two horde are here and if we attack them we are going to have a very bad day but they don't attack us on sight and we can talk to all of the goblins around here so let's go ahead and turn this in this is for a dungeon quest but i'll go ahead and just pick it up and then let's come over towards these two goblins right here and then we have some different stuff so let's go ahead and pick up those two quests and then we have Brulene Essence we can go ahead and pick that up as well where we got an item that we have to use in this quest so maybe I'll throw it on my action bar which speaking of my action bar let's go ahead and throw I don't know how I have this key on let's throw ice block there let's throw ice barrier there and let's throw cold snap there that's probably a little bit different than how I had it, but every single one of my characters has a different action bar loadout than the other. So let's go ahead, sneak past all of these imps right here in that ward, and let's try to get towards the main road here, where I want to explore a little bit more of this area before we start doing some questing here. And up ahead, we actually see a really cool thing where we have all of these black rock orcs around here, but we also have a statue to Anduin Lothar, who is a really, really important lore character that I think we've talked a little bit about, but I'll talk more about in just a moment. And he is one of the most important characters from Warcraft 2, and a very important battle from Warcraft 2 took place in this zone. Wish Warcraft 2 itself is a pretty cool game, and it is nice to see this monument to such a cool and an important character from that game here in World of Warcraft, where of course World of Warcraft takes a lot from the first three Warcraft games, given that it set up a lot of the lore that we see here in World of Warcraft. But I want to explore one more place that is very cool, and it is Black Rock Mountain itself, which we have not explored yet in this series, even though we talked about it a little bit when we were in the Syrian Gorge. And I want to take a moment to step inside and kind of just show everyone what this place is inside, because it is an incredibly important area for I just got this mountain there. I guess we can't be mountain Black Rock Mountain. I forgot about that, at least in vanilla. But this is a very important location, not only in the lore, because it has a lot of important lore, important moments that happen here. And that's a lot of importance in like one sentence. But it's also an incredibly important location for in-game content in vanilla World of Warcraft. 
where there are two raids, 40 player raids that take place here, and there are three dungeons. Two of those dungeons are like 10 player dungeons, so they're like mini raids. And then one is generally considered like the longest dungeon in all of World of Warcraft, and it is Blackrock Depths, a very famous and very popular dungeon. And then we have Blackrock Spire, which there is Upper Blackrock Spire, and Lower Blackrock Spire, which are like the pseudo raids. And then we have the Molten Core and Black Queen Lair, where we fight Ragnaros and we fight Nefarian. And we have this very, very cool area right here where we can see that there is a bit of like Shadow Forge City here, which is an important dwarf location for the Dark Iron Dwarves, which we have talked about a bit, because this is kind of the home for the Dark Iron Dwarves, and it is also the home for the Black Rock Orcs. Which a very funny thing is that the name of this mountain and then the name of the Black Rock clan is actually a bit of a coincidence. Where I don't know if this was changed after the fact or if this was originally planned, but they are two distinctly different areas named for two distinctly different reasons. But we have the Black Rock Orcs that live here and we have the Dark Iron Dwarves that live here. And then we can see over here is the exit towards Syrian Gorge. And then we can find the different entrances to the dungeons here. And the raids, you actually have to go into the dungeons in order to play through them. So you have to clear a little bit of that stuff. Where one of the raids, I believe you can actually teleport to once you like complete a quest. So you don't have to go through the dungeon anymore. But nevertheless, it is a really cool location. And a lot of people that like to play in the in-game content of World of Warcraft will know this place very very well and we have the entrance to Black Rock Spire right there which is also the entrance to Black Queen Lair and then if we went across that chain right there we can see that there's a meeting stone for Black Rock Depths as we go down the chain into kind of that building that we see on the other side there which is the entrance to that dungeon which leads to the raid Molten Core which is very very cool but that is all I'm going to do right now I am probably not going to do any dungeons and I'm definitely probably not going to do any raids and I want to stick more to the zone of the burning steps and I want to talk a lot about the story so I'm going to go ahead and do what I have done in the past few episodes where I'm going to go ahead and start heading out into the zone and we are going to explore it a little bit. I'm going to complete a lot of quests. I'm going to kill a lot of monsters and we're hopefully going to get a lot of experience and progress through the game a lot. And let's go ahead and talk about several pieces of lore that I want to talk about. So the Burning Steps is a very interesting zone for me because it's a very high level zone where we're kind of here at around level 52 and it goes to about like level 57 is like the highest level mob and there are a ton of elites around here and like we just explored there is a lot of stuff to do in the in-game content part of World of Warcraft Classic where there's all the raids and dungeons and stuff but with how important Burning Step is in the lore which we're about to talk about and like mechanically in the game with it being an in-game zone. I have not spent a lot of time in this zone before. Obviously I've like ran through here before and I've done some questing here, but the first time that I really dive deep into the zone to learn about the quests and kind of like all the different things going on around the map here was in Wrath of the Lich King Classic like a couple of months ago where the questing that we are doing right now and the, I'm going to do a bunch of mob grinding as well just to get some experience is kind of like the second time I have spent a lot of time in this zone and it is a pretty decent zone it's not the best for questing there's only a few quests here but we are going to get like a couple of levels from being here or like upwards of a couple of levels so it's like pretty good for our adventures here but this zone is part of the northern Red Ridge mountain range. This valley was presumably similar to it a long time ago and used to be controlled by the human kingdom of Stormwind, more particularly by the ancestors of the human Morgan. Some 200 years before the Dark Portal opened, the Dark Iron Dwarves earned the region its present name in the War of the Three Hammers. The dwarves had established their new home there after their clan was exiled from Ironforge. They practiced sorcery that eventually destroyed them and the entire northern extent of the mountain range. In an effort to summon elemental minions to aid his people in a war with the Bronzebeard and Wildhammer clans, the sorcerer Thane Thorson inadvertently awoke Fire Lord Ragnaros, who was previously banished by the Titans. The Fire Lord's arrival melted several mountains in this range and forged a great volcano in the Blast's epicenter. The landscape has remained scarred ever since. After the destruction, the land north of the Black Rock Mountain Ridge came to be known as the Syrian Gorge, and to the south, the Burning Steps. 
Orcs came there during the First War, maintaining settlements around and within the volcano, the climate being something of their liking. After the Horde conquered Blackrock Spire, they used it as a base of operations until the late days of the Second War, when the Alliance invaded the Burning Steps and besieged Blackrock Spire. Horde Chief Orgrim Doomhammer slew the human hero Andrew and Lothar by the foot of the volcano near the war's end, though Lothar's death turned the tide and spurred the Alliance on to crush the failing Horde. Where there is a bunch of stuff that I want to talk about and elaborate a little bit more on from what we talked about here, where first is Morgan, who is a very interesting character in the game, where the main base of operations for the Alliance here is Morgan's Vigil. And to read her bio a little bit, Morgan is the leader of Morgan's Militia. Her family used to own land in the Burning Steps until the Dark Iron Dwarves and Ragnaros killed them and drove her people away. Having returned from her vigil, she seeks to go on the offensive on the Dark Iron Dwarves of Blackrock Depths and establish her own kingdom in the Burning Steps. Where what I just read there is lore and story from Cataclysm, where we have this character Morgan, who the namesake area of Morgan's Vigil is named after this character, but uh, Morgan's Militia is an organization that is going to be formed in the, the Cataclysm expansion, and their assault on the Black Rock Depths is an event that is going to happen during the Cataclysm expansion. But I just find it like really interesting that there's this kind of like important character that used to live in this part of the world who has a namesake outpost named after her who doesn't exist in the game and is introduced in a later expansion in Cataclysm. And another interesting part about this is how she's not like the only person that this is the case in World of Warcraft, where if you go back to Ashenvale, I think I pointed out Maestra's post or Maestra's outpost, which is a location just west of Astronar in Ashenvale, and it is like a night elf like fortification with like a couple buildings, like a tower and like a normal building, and it's named after a night elf Maestra, and like that's her outpost or post or whatever, and she is a decently important character that we don't see until Cataclysm, where she is introduced in the Cataclysm expansion. So it's kind of interesting, you know, like one place in Kalimdor and one place in Eastern Kingdom. Kingdoms, and there might be more places that I don't recall off the top of my head, but these are just two of them. Where with Cataclysm, again, we see Morgan, but just in Vanilla WoW, we kind of just have a location named after her. And we learn that it used to be like a bit of a like settlement, and there's like different places around this area that like you can see like destroyed buildings and stuff but they are destroyed, and this is a pretty hostile environment. We're speaking of ruined buildings. We were talking about the Dark Irons and Thorsen and them summoning Ragnaros, which we know that happened, and then we talked about that when we were in the Syrian Gorge, but to just highlight this place a little bit more, we don't know too much about the ruins of Thorsen, which was the original capital city of the Dark Iron Clan, but it existed here in the Burning Steps. But about 200 years before the opening of the Dark Portal, Sorcerer Thane Thorson's namesake city stood as a proud settlement in a lush expanse of land that would later become the dilapidated Burning Steps. Thorson was home to the Dark Iron Clan, and at the time they were in the midst of a civil war with the Dwarven Nation at large. The city was founded when the Dark Iron Clan became exiled from the historic Dwarven capital of Ironforge, and Sorcerer Thane Thorson led his people south into the Red Ridge Mountains. The Red Ridge Mountain Range's northern reaches later came to be utterly destroyed by Sorcerer Thane Thorson in an inadvertently self-destructive act that cost his people their freedom with the events of Ragnaros and then we know that they founded a Shadowforge city within Black Rock Mountain. We're then looking at the events of a Warcraft 2 and then a little bit with Warcraft 1 we saw that the orcs kind of came into the Red Ridge Mountains during the events of Warcraft 1 where they killed Keen Lane and they destroyed Stormwind at the same time they were doing this. And then after that, basically Adrian Lothar rallied everyone who was left of Stormwind, and they went north to Lordaeron, and they created the alliance with the different human kingdoms around there, the elves of Quothalos, and then the dwarves. And then they pushed the orcs all the way out of Lordaeron to Blackrock Mountain, where Adrian Lothar died here. But the Alliance, despite the loss of their Supreme Commander, were able to continue pushing the Orcs all the way to the Dark Portal, where then we have the events of the expansion for Warcraft 2, where there's some more stuff going on with Blackrock Spire and so on, and then that leads to Warcraft 3 and the events of World of Warcraft, where there are still Orcs here in Blackrock Spire. But something very interesting is if we start looking at the Black Dragon Flight. 
which we have two very important black dragons who are the children of Deathwing, who is the black dragon aspect. And we have Onyxia and we have Nefarian, who we talked a little bit about Onyxia so far in this series, but to basically kind of cover in a very like condensed way about like the entire story here, Deathwing he was leaving Azeroth and he went over to Outland to like basically just do a bunch of stuff and he set his two children Onyxia and Nefarian to infiltrate two of the kingdoms here in the Eastern Kingdoms where Onyxia infiltrated Stormwind as we saw a long time ago where we were talking about Marshall Windsor we actually did most of the quest chain in this episode related to Marshall Windsor including talking to Bovar Four Dragon and talking to Lady Prestor who is Onyxia disguised as a human but i didn't do like the whole quest chain where we free marshall windsor and then we march on to onyxia like we explored a while ago so onyxia basically kind of infiltrated stormwind and then we have like all the issues with the guards and like the defias brotherhood and stuff like that going on in Stormwind, but Nefarian infiltrated Blackrock Spire and is basically controlling the Blackrock Orcs of Blackrock Spire, where we kind of discover that in our questing here in the Burning Steps as we are engaging with the Blackrock Orcs and kind of learning more about what is going on in this region. And Nefarian is the final raid boss of the Blackwing Lair, which is a very cool raid in Blackrock Mountain. But speaking about Nefarian being a raid boss here in Blackwing Lair, Nefarian and also Onyxia become raid bosses in a later raid in a future expansion where we were talking about Cataclysm earlier with Morgan and Maestra. In Cataclysm, we have Blackwing Descent, I think is the raid, where the final boss of that raid is basically a like resurrected, reconstructed Onyxia and Nefarian that you have to fight that Deathwing basically kind of just like resurrected using like a special type of magic and stuff like that. That. And that is another raid that takes place in a Blackrock Mountain. So this is just another like expansion that kind of used Blackrock Mountain for its own in-game content on top of Classic WoW. And then I think it was in Warlords of Draenor that a new dungeon was actually added here. So that's just another thing of in-game content in this area of the road. And I think since then there hasn't been too much stuff going on around in Blackrock Mountain. But with a future expansion, people are predicting that there might be a road revamp similar to what we saw in Cataclysm, where if that does happen, we should see a lot of changes to this region of the world, including Black Rock Mountain and the Burning Steps. Or another little tidbit of information that most people should probably know, but if you don't know, Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, is the final boss of the Molten Core raid, which is basically the first raid of World of Warcraft alongside Onyxia and Onyxia's Lair. And then in Cataclysm, we fight Ragnaros again, but in a different location, not here in Black Rock Mountain. But throughout my time doing all the quests here in the Burning Steps, there was quite a bit to do and I spent a long time kind of just killing ogres really to get some experience. I tried to get a group together multiple times to do the some of the elite quests related to killing the members of the Black Dragon Flight, and then eventually someone was creating a group so I joined on them and we did all that as you've probably seen most of this. And I fought the orcs and I've explored different areas including the Altar of Storms which is a cool type of like building kind of from the original Warcraft games uh, where in like Warcraft 3 the Altar of Storms is used to resurrect your fallen heroes in that game. But I believe during the events of Warcraft 2, the Altar of Storms is actually used by Nerzu, I believe, to create two-headed ogres. I think that's kind of like the events that were going on. But there's just like a lot of cool locations around the Burning Steps and as I've said multiple times it's just a really important location and we did spend some time here doing some quests and getting some experience but I still want to get a little bit more experience in this episode where I think earlier I said I got like two levels here I think I only got like one level and then I got an additional level in Fellwood so I decided to change course from the Burning Steps after I completed all the quests here and I went back to Kalimdor and I did a little bit of exploration and Fellwood, where there isn't really too much I want to say about my adventures here, except I just did a bunch of questing around here and kind of just gained some experience. We'll dive deep into Fellwood on our orc character, I believe, when we come here in the next World of Warcraft Let's Play series. I do a little bit of a teaser there. I'm planning on doing an orc next. But the main thing that I kind of want to highlight really quickly 
is the reputation that you can gain in Felwood related to Timber Mall Hold, which again, we'll talk more about this. But in a classic World of Warcraft, gaining reputation for this faction is like significantly harder than the Wrath of the Lich King version and the Retail Wild version, where you have to kill a lot of like the evil Furbolgs around the map and get a lot of feathers to turn in. And then in a future map in Kalimdor that we're going to be exploring very, very, very soon, we can do the same thing to build reputation for Timber Mall Hold. And I really like the Timber Mall Hold, like reputation grind. It's like kind of just like relaxing where you kill a bunch of evil furbolgs, I guess, in this zone and then the next zone in Kalimdor. But something very interesting about Timber Mall Hold is how there's actually a tailoring trainer there, where there's one for the Horde and one for the Alliance and Terran Mill and then and Theramore, respectively. But there's a third one, neutral to both factions, in Timber Mall Hold. But you can only talk to them if you're friendly, I believe or you can talk to them when you're neutral but then when you're friendly they actually offer you a quest to make two very special pieces of cloth for them that we might do a little bit in the future just to like turn in an extra quest but i just did a bunch of questing around philwood killed a bunch of mobs and gained some experience and i think with that i'm going to go ahead and call this episode good here where next episode we can begin yet another adventure and go check out more places but I hope y'all enjoyed watching this episode as we explored the burning steps a lot and then I did a tiny bit of stuff in Felwood and I hope y'all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember to drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye.